All right, three, two, representing um, functions. So let me unfreeze that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so representing functions, we had graphs, we had um, kind of like an input output table, and then we had mapping. All right, I'm really gonna focus on tables because that's typically how you see it, okay? So this is kind of what everything looks like for you guys, okay? So example one says the equation that represents the relationship between the number of hours a student studies for a test and the student's test score is represented by y equals 5x plus 15. And it wants us to create a table and a set of ordered pairs that represents the situation. Now, this is where I kind of like can allow you to use technology. So do you have a graphing calculator? If you do, get it out, okay? And I'll kind of walk you through how to do this. If you don't, you can use your brain or just a um, simple calculator. A calculator? Unreal, Hopi, and that's going on YouTube. And everybody who watches my videos are going to know that you're unprepared, and they're going to judge you, maybe silently or publicly through the comments. And let me tell you, that might be the first comment on the video. I've never gotten a comment. I have like a hundred videos, hundred total. There's like two hundred videos on my YouTube channel. I got like a hundred views. I know. It's like batting 50%. All right. So you lied to me. Now everybody knows you're a liar. Unreal. 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 All right. Okay, let me try to make this. Yep, there we go. All right, there's that. And then there's this. Okay. All right, so when you turn on your calculator, it looks like this. Okay, just the blinking light. Uh, those of you at home can see what I'm pushing. If you get lost in the bottom right, where it says clear second mode, clear, you can follow along. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do this using technology first, all right, because I want to save you time rather than cost you time on a test. So if we look back at this equation, does everybody see how this is y equals 15x or 5x plus 15? Does everybody see that? Does everybody see how it's in y equals? Whenever an equation's in y equals, you can plug it into your calculator. So in order to do this, you hit the Y equals button. It's in the top left. All right. And now my screen looks like this. And I had some stuff in here because I was working uh, yesterday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, who came in. Do you know? Who? Oh, okay. Sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type 5x plus 15 into this equation. So everybody do 5. Now this is important. This x next to my green button. Okay, because that's the variable button. Plus 15. And now what I can do is I can create a graph. Okay. So I could graph it and I could see that, uh, Liam, this is a function, right? It would pass the vertical line test. I could see that very quickly. But more importantly, I can create a table. Okay. Now, since we're talking about test scores and time, we're not gonna be looking at the negative aspect of it. I'm just gonna be looking at the positive. And if you look at this, this is my table. Now, let's see how this corresponds to this. 
Okay, so I pushed the, uh, let me see your calculator. Push the blue button and then graph in the upper right. Okay. So now how does this correspond to this? Well, the input is going to be your hour study. And let's face it, Jordan, since you're back in fact, okay, you probably start out with studying zero hours, one, two, and three. You probably don't spend much more than three hours studying for a test, right? No, of course not. Who would? That's ridiculous. So the number of hours studied, these are my x values. Now my test score is going to be my y values. Now what I can do to get these y values very quickly is just look at my table. Notice zero is going to correspond to 15, one would correspond to 20, two would correspond to 25, and three to 30. So I would just plug that in. 15, 20, 25, 30. Not, not very good test book, right? This test is probably for um, like the bar exam where you have to spend many, many hours, right? Not just, you guys see how I created that table? <coughs> now, how could I do it if I didn't have a calculator? Okay. Now, without a calculator, this is what I do. It's very simple. Okay. Start out. That's X. And I'm going to pick my points. I typically start out with, you know, zero, one, two, three. I kind of just pick those anyway. They're small, they're easy numbers, they give me an idea of what's going on. My test score is still gonna be Y, but here's the difference. Your calculator spit out numbers for you, right? Here's what it's actually doing. It's actually doing five times zero plus 15, and that equals 15. And then it's gonna do five times one plus 15. Then it does five times two plus 15. And finally, it does five times three plus 15. And it gets you the 20, the 25, and the 30. Do you guys see the usefulness of the calculator? Does it make sense? But do you see, because I know you don't have a calculator, that's fine. Do you see how to do it without it? We all okay with that? This is an input output table, and it's very useful. All right, now let's talk about creating a mapping. So mapping is a diagram that visually shows the relationship between the domain and the range, okay? So is the last one had like, you know, like, Zero went to 15. This is going to be like more of a drawing. So how do I do it? You ready for this? These X values go in your domain. Your uh, kind of X oval. So I'm going to put in one, two, three, and four. Now my range, okay. My range and you know, I'm just going to jumble it up a little bit so you can see kind of what's going on. Okay, I'm just going to put it backwards like 30, uh, 20, and 10. Do you guys see how I kind of did that? I just kind of randomly wrote them down. For you, okay, because I just want you to see how to do it when it's on board. But all you do is this you look at your table, one goes to what number? 10. So you just draw a arrow to the top. Where does two go, Jordan? AJ, where does three go? 30. And Angela, where does four go? 
Do you guys see how I just draw arrows to where it goes? It doesn't matter the order. I just draw the arrows. All right. So it says one of the most common ways, and the way I like it the most, is to graph a function on a uh, coordinate plane. So some graphs have discrete, while others have continuous. So remember, discrete is the disjoint ones, and continuous is the smooth curves. Okay. So discrete uh, domains are a set of input values that consist only of certain numbers in an interval. All right. For example, they just gave you a number line, and it's like one, two, three, four, five. Kind of think of like if we as a class are going somewhere, right? I would need to get certain bands. I couldn't get like half a band. So it's either I have one band or I have two bands. I can't have like one and a half band. And continuous is a smooth line. Okay. See how it encompasses every number? So here's how we kind of do this. Now, it says the function y equals negative three x plus 12 represents the amount of fluid ounces of juice remaining at, in a bottle after you take a sip. And it says, identify the independent and dependent variables. And then it says, I need to graph it. All right. Destiny, you ready for this? You ready? No? Oh boy. Oh boy. How about that? All right, here we go. So first off, independent variable. This is the one that kind of controls the other one, okay? If we look up here, it tells me what it is. It says, this function represents the amount Y in fluid ounces of the juice remaining in a bottle after you take X gulps. Independent from that first slide, I believe on Monday, was associated with the letter X. So independent variable is gulps. And dependent is, I'm just going to put ounces. OZ. Uh, now, how do I create a graph for this? Well, I kind of need to create a table first. So everybody create a table. You're going to have two columns. The first column is going to be your X. The second column is going to be Y. And notice, Hopi, it tells me what my domain is. Do you see that? So those numbers go right here. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Now there's two ways you could do this. The first way, you could use your graphing calculator. And that's my recommendation. And I know Drew is already doing that. All right. Nate, are you doing it using a graphing calculator? Um, no. What's that? Um, no, I don't have one. Oh, might want to get one. Might be helpful. Okay. But here's how we do it if we don't have it. Oh, that's hot. Here's what we do. We are going to take this number zero and we're going to plug it into our equation which is negative three X plus 12. So I'm going to do negative three times zero plus 12. And that's going to give me 12. Then I'm going to do negative three times one plus 12. And that gives me nine. Then I do for negative or for two, negative three times two plus 12. That gives me six. And then if you're on your A game, 
Delaney, what do you see happening here? 12, 9, 6. Take a guess at what the next number would be, Delaney. Three. Three. Wow, that was good act. Very good, it is three. Now, how do you know it's three? Well, one, there's a pattern. When we use sequential numbers, there's gonna be a pattern. <coughs> it's going down by threes. Well, that makes sense because notice, oh, there we go. That's negative three corresponds to what this is going down by. So the next one would be zero. Now, I need to graph these points. Each of these corresponds to a point, zero, 12, one, nine, two, six, three, three, and four, zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my coordinate plane and I'm going to plot them. Zero, 12. So let's see where that's going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Notice I don't have 12. So what should I count by? Twos. Sounds great. So we're just going to be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So zero, 12. Right there. One, nine. Two, six. Three, three. Four, zero. Now, this should be a line. Does that look like a line? Yeah. And I can connect them. Hello? Yes. Sure. Hi. What did you do? Yeah, they want to see you in the office. Fantastic. And then I just connect them from start to finish there because it's continuous. Maybe your, your SIP doesn't you know, encompass three ounces. All right, you guys try this one. Try creating the graph for the temperature equals 19M plus 65. All right, where M stands for minutes. Okay, identify the dependent and independent variables. And then try and answer these questions. Does. Where was this trip when I was trying to find it?
All right, let's look at this. Kevin. Kevin? Yeah? What's the independent variable? Minutes. Minutes, very good. Which means the dependent is degrees. Now I created my table. I just went from zero to six. Okay. Uh, B says a recipe calls for an oven temperature of 350 degrees to describe the domain in range of the function. Well, I can't answer that just yet, right? I don't know enough about this. So I'm gonna create my table and I'm gonna see what happens. So zero, if I plug in zero, I, I have 19 times zero plus 65, I equals 65. 19 times one plus 65, that's what? 84, 19 times two, plus 65, that's 103. 19 times three, plus 65, that's 122. 19 times four, plus 65, that's what? 141? Am I right? I didn't get that yeah. 19 times 5 plus 65, that's going to be 160. 19 times 6 plus 65, that equals 179. Wow. All right. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I got 10 blocks. What do I count by? 20s? Count by 20s, right? So, I don't know. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. All right, so at zero, I'm at 65. It's gonna be right about here. One, I'm at 84. Two, I'm at one and three. Three, I'm at 122. <coughs> Four, I'm at 141. Five, 160. And six, 179. Does everybody's graph kind of look like that? Right now, the question really becomes a recipe calls for a temperature of 350. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, this is how you do it. Let's go to the table. Now, which one is talking about temperature? Is it the X column or the Y? So if I'm looking for when Y is 350, I just keep scrolling to when I find Y is 350. So everybody see how I found it? The answer is 15. But I don't have that calculator. 
So here's how I do it. Ready, Neve? So if my temperature is 350, that's T. So 350 equals 19M plus 65. And now I have to solve this equation. All right. If you don't have the graphing calculator in the scrolling process, you're going to have to substitute it and go from there. AJ, are you okay with that? Uh, sure. You lying to me? It's never getting a lot. You could have done five. Yeah, you could have done seven. You could have done. You have to do, for right now, you have to do at least like five. Okay. So I just should, so you could have done zero, one, two, three, four. That's five points. And then just call it a day. Okay. Um, but I just decided to go to six because when I made my table, I had a lot of space at the bottom. So I just kept going. It's really it. Um, sorry, there's not more of a definitive answer. No. All right. But that's all the work for this problem. To the next page. All right. There are two here, one and two. I want you guys to do them on your own. One and two. Drew got it. One and two. Creating tables. Money and DVDs. Size smells pretty good. <laughs> it's like floral. Ooh. Does he even smell that? Not out of one, though. Not out of, that one not the stone. You can do pink. Me? No, I refuse to give up the pink now. It's so smash my face in the mouth. It's broken and it's great box. It's like I got off those. You in? No. Did you remember the person who did it? Yeah, DJ. Wait, you might need it. All right, I know you guys aren't done, but I want to go over this one. Okay, 
since the linear function m equals 50 minus 9d represents the amount of uh, money m in dollars uh, you have after buying d dvds okay so let's talk about this and i'm going to pick on who's here Delaney. Delaney. Yeah. Delaney. All right, cool. Let me ask you this. Is the domain discrete or continuous? Uh, Do you think it's going to be smooth or it's going to be broken up? What do you think? Take a guess. Uh, dis discreet? Yeah, very good. It's going to be discreet. And here's why, Delaney. Because you cannot buy half a DVD. You either buy the DVD or you don't. Whereas like temperature, it was smooth because we, we would gradually increase. You could have half a degree or you could have a quarter of a degree. You just don't go from 200 degrees to 350 degrees. You have to hit every number in between. But with a DVD, you either buy it or you don't. So here it is discrete. Because you either buy the DVD or you don't. All right, so we're gonna make a table. And it was D for DVDs and M for money. All right, and uh, Sophie, this time, I just went zero, one, two, three, four. Because that's what my graph, my table has. Now, if I buy zero DVDs, well, 50 minus nine times zero, that's, you know, 50 bucks. So that's my 50 bucks. If I buy one DVD, I'd have $41. Two, I would have 32. Three, I would have 23. And if I bought four, I would have $14. Now, how does this look? Well, it already labeled this for me. So this is going to be my DVDs on bottom. And my money on the side. So I'd be at zero and 50. Zero and 50. So it's going to be right here. 0 and 50, 1 and 41, so I'm going to be right there, 2 and 32, I'm going to be right about there, 3 and 23, I'm going to be like right here, and 4 and 14, that's going to be like right there. Now, this is when I get tricky. I don't connect them. Remember the last ones I connected them? This one I don't, all right? I don't connect it. It's just a set of dots. Okay. So remember, think of the temperature. The temperature gradually increased. That's why I connected them. Okay. The drinking of fluid ounces. Okay. You don't have to drink three ounces every time. You can drink like half an ounce, quarter of an ounce. You can have like a little pipette drop. You can have whatever amount of the fluid you want. But here it's either you bought it or you didn't. It's fine. Okay. So it's just a set of uh, tables. Now, what's the maximum number of DVDs I could buy? Yep. Five. Okay. And at five, I would have five bucks. Okay. Now, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could do 
you could set this equal to like zero and you could see how many DVDs you could buy. Okay, or you could complete the graph until like you can't, you don't have $9 to buy uh, a DVD. At 14, I have one more like DVD I could buy. If I subtract nine from that, I'm left with five. After that, you couldn't do it. So what is my domain of this function? It would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. And my uh, range would be 50, 41, 32, 23, 14, and five. Okay, any questions? All right, your asynchronous work. Watch this, ready? It's going to be the homework that you would have to complete tonight, you like that? So I'm gonna put that up under the asynchronous work. All right, you guys have a great weekend.